Hey Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. What's up Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I am a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode eight of DevNet Snack Minute. And if you don't know what DevNet Snack Minute is, it's your weekly 10 minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff. For this episode, we're actually gonna talk to you and we're having it a continuous a uh, theme for and topic for our discussions is uh, talking about DevTools. Matt, what are some of your DevTools that you like to use? Yeah, I'm excited about this topic because it's one of the things that a lot of people, uh, when they come to our sessions, when they're, uh, you know, when we used to be able to do Cisco Lives Live, uh, they'd say, hey, you know, I saw you using this thing when you were doing the demo. What was that? And, um, and so it's a question that we get a lot and, and we wanted to make this kind of a recurring, uh, a recurring event. Um, so this is the first one where we're going to talk about DevTools. So the first thing I'm going to actually talk about today is Postman. Now, for those of you who are kind of familiar with DevNet, you might have been initiated to Postman. And so uh, this might not be for you, but if it's, it's stick around, there's some cool things I can show you about it. Uh, but that's the first one that I wanted to, to show because we live in the API world, right? This is all APIs all the time. And Postman is one of the one of the best tools for getting started with using APIs. Just like anything that you're starting with, you don't actually have to start from scratch. Um, you have tools out there that would actually make your journey easier. And the first step as you're going through this for you know playing with APIs and testing APIs, you need to understand what Postman is. And I always talk about that when we're teaching sessions at Cisco Live is, you know, there is, you could go and use curl. You can you can do whatever you'd like if you're comfortable with CLI. Um, but there are some tools out there like Postman that would actually make your life easier and and would help you understand how to formulate your API call. So Postman is one great one that that I'm glad we're bringing up here. Yeah. So I'm going to do a quick demo with it because then that leads into the second tool that I'm going to talk about, which are Jupyter notebooks. Um, but we'll we'll start here on Postman. And um, the nice thing about Postman is once you start working with APIs, you can start to, to gather them together into collections. And DevNet has a whole host of uh, platform uh, collections. So you can see here I have the DNAC Sandbox, uh, Cisco DNA Center, um, that covers a number of different API calls that are available for Cisco DNA Center. We have Cisco Intersight, SD-WAN, Meraki Dashboard, blah, 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 blah. And there's ones that I also, I mean, I'm missing some. We have ones for WebEx Teams. We have ones for our... Uh, security platforms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and these are basically, you guys are just collections of, of API calls that DevNet and Cisco have provided to our developer community to be able to just import into Postman and do what Postman does. Yeah, which is make API calls. <laughs> so uh, for this particular one, uh, I'm just going to walk you through some simple steps that you need to interact with the Cisco DNA Center APIs. Um, we've seen this kind of before in some of our other sessions, but uh, I wanted to kind of show you and see how a developer would increment with this tool to then writing code. And so the first thing that we're going to do is get our API token so that we can actually make API calls. Everything's set up for me with the collection. Um, and then I have to fill in the blanks a little bit for the actual service that I'm working with. So we're using the DNA sandbox environment, and this is preloaded information that we can then uh, set variables for. So things that could potentially change from environment to environment. Um, so that's already set. I'm pulling those, those things in, uh, sandboxdnac.cisco.com, and the port that we actually want to make our call to. Our authorization is already set for us, so anything that you need to make these API calls, um, the first API call uses basic auth, and then we can go ahead and hit send, and that'll generate our, AP, or our API key uh, or API token for our next calls. And so our information comes back in the body at the bottom here. Um, but the interesting thing that you can do with Postman um, is actually write a little bit of JavaScript as well to actually parse out some of that information and add that to your environment so that you don't have to always copy and paste these things manually. Or if we wanted to, we could actually highlight it and right click on it. Um, I can actually set environment variables as well um, from that right click. With that, if I'm not familiar with JavaScript or I'm not comfortable with it, um, I can do it that way as well. So they've added some nice features and functions over the years to make that useful. And then um, I can then move forward since now my token is set 
and make an API call to the network device. And so, you know, relatively simple, but you can see how quickly I can start working with these API calls. Um, I pull down the, the collection, I pull down the environment that's preset for me for DevNet Sandbox, and boom, I'm off to the races. Maybe 10 minutes at best um, to, to get that running. And, and I can't tell you, Matt, how many times as I'm working with Postman and I'm trying to architect my, you know, the, the tool that I'm building or whatever script I'm, I'm writing, I can't tell you how many times I've actually leveraged Postman and the method that you showed us with the test and writing JavaScript in, within Postman itself to apply logic as I'm getting data because sometimes I don't actually care about everything that comes back and I could get a whole bunch of lines of JSON that I only care for like a little bit of it. So if I can actually, within the Postman call itself, I can actually parse that. Then when I switch it over to Python, I have all of that information at hand and I can build my dictionary properly. So it actually, it's a really, really fun way and cool way and easy way to learn how to do all of this using just that test method in, in, uh, or test tab in, in Postman. And, and it actually uh, takes us the next step from the documentation that we'd seen in previous episodes of Snack Minutes where we were actually able to make the API calls in there because this allows you a little more granularity in changing things and flipping switches and turning things on. Um, the other little cool button here is the code button. And uh, there's a number of, of code um, samples that get generated from the API call that you're, you're setting. And it gives you a good baseline for writing code. Um, now, this is going to be a static API call. You don't know what logic is going to be built into the application, but it's a good jumping off point. Um, and then that brings me then to this other tool that I've kind of been excited about using in the past. I haven't needed it as much recently, but it's always something that's useful for people to know. And that is uh, Jupyter Notebooks. And uh, what these are are contained development environments that allow you to uh, write code, run that code without installing um, like a full development environment. You don't have to necessarily install Python natively to make this work. Um, you can sometimes run them in browsers depending on what's going on. And so uh, Jupyter allows you to actually try uh, these things out in their browser. So we're going we're gonna to kick off a Python notebook, and it's going to take actually spin that up in, a, in another service called Binder. So we'll, we'll let that take a second. This is just Python base, or I could do any, any programming language within this? Um, I, I've personally only used it for Python. I believe it actually supports a number of different languages. All right, so once you have your Jupyter Notebook up and running, usually what you'll do is download the Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook application. It's all Python-based and run it locally. Um, they also allow you to run it in browser as well um, to try stuff out and kind of get comfortable with it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new Python 3 notebook and kind of take what I was doing with the, um, with the DNA Postman example and try to translate that to Python code. Um, and I'm going to do it in little bits and pieces so you can see how these how these notebooks work. So I can start to write Python code. The first thing that we're going to do is import our libraries that we want to work with. I'm going to be using requests in JSON to uh, make my API calls and then parse the information that's coming out. And then the next thing we're going to do is get our API token. And I already have this code kind of queued up, so um, let's paste that in there. Uh, we're setting some variables to actually interact with our API. And then we're going to make our request to the same exact same service that we use with Postman. It's literally doing the same thing. Um, so if I run that, it'll actually go out, make the API call, and, and generate my API key. I do get an insecure request warning because I'm not verifying the uh, SSL certificate. But uh, since we're just doing education and demo, that's OK. So the next thing I'm going to do then is uh, take that API key or API token and then get the network device information that, that we got in our previous example in Postman. And so I'm going to pop that um, actual uh, code in here. That's the old code. I didn't uh, get the new code. And I'm going to actually just print out the response so you guys can see what that looks like coming back here. And for our snackers, the username and password that we have there is for our sandbox. It's available to anybody to leverage. It's not like we're sharing something that is out of the ordinary. Anybody could go in and look at our always on sandbox. So we're all good. <laughs> and so we get our network devices back in JSON. And if I wanted to start to parse this list, I could do that. But you can see how quickly that I turned my uh, playing with the APIs into actual code that I can kind of walk through and, and pick apart. Um, in an environment that I don't necessarily have to 
you know, go the full boat to set up. So those were those were the two tools that I thought were kind of exciting that, that I wanted to talk about today. Um, but, you know, there's a period of others we can go down. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely useful. And, and you know, any developer that's looking to get started, I think it's a good, a good thing to learn and understand. So we covered Postman and we cover this. Now, a little bit of a shift in the conversation, it's still kind of a, a developer, um, a good tool set to have under in your tool belt. And it's, uh, I think to me, it's soft skills. And we, we kind of overlook that um, a lot. And it's not, it's not when you're working in a, in a team, when you're working in the developer team um, and you have to integrate with other people and um, that know and have a different understanding, whether that's a, a network engineer, a project manager, you need to have the right tool set in order to be able to have similar conversations. Um, so collaborating and being able to work with that. And there are some cool, uh, some cool tools out there that enables us like Git, right? One of the things that kind of ties with that is being able to write this code that you wrote and I being able to share it with me or share it with the team for code review, being able to explain it to the network engineer that's looking to automate their network and pulling in, you know, device information to do device onboarding or something. Yeah. They, you know, the, the, the network engineer has a lot of knowledge from a network perspective, but for me, being able to have that conversation and have that intersection is an actual um, soft skill and it's an important skill to have um, as, as you're, you're going through this. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, ultimately, these things are so big. The networks are getting bigger. The applications that we're building for them are becoming more complex and, and different parts and pieces. And um, especially as we talk about moving into microservices architecture and things like that. So tools like Git, which will, I'm assuming we'll probably go through in one of our future sessions, um, are, are useful for that collaboration piece. But there, you know, there's a, there's a whole set of, uh, an, a contract that it goes around with a team as far as managing repositories in Git and talking to each other about the work that you're doing and, uh, you know, all of the things that go along with collaborating on projects. And uh, so I completely agree that um, those things are super helpful. You know, that kind of got me thinking about the fact that, you know, we do, I know we talk about certifications a lot. I get really excited about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you know, the DevNet Associate Certification does kind of cover a lot of those things in addition to the technology. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's uh, it kind of bridges that gap, right? Where it brings in, it brings in that that developer mentality with the network engineer mentality, and it and there's a it kind of uh, puts them in the middle to be able to have an intelligent conversation, especially if they're working on similar projects together. So the network engineer is very heavy on networking. While the the DevNet developer engineer is is on the programming and developer side, what DevNet associate or the DevNet certification exams in general prepares you to do is allows you to have that allows network engineers to come and kind of move up into that that developer world as well as the developers who come from programming world to have that intelligent conversation with network that with the network engineer in in sense that they we introduce you to network concepts and network programmability. So um, I couldn't agree more, Matt, with, with that statement. Yeah, and I actually, I didn't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing my class of 2020 sweatshirt uh, for this episode. I, I just got it last week. And uh, so I'm, I'm DevNet certified. Uh, I think we mentioned that earlier. Um, but I, yeah, I agree. This is, yeah, it's been, it's been uh, those, those, that material, the learning, all that goes along with it really does, like you said, bridge that gap. Um, between the network engineer, the software developer, and just the collaboration that needs to occur between the two sets uh, of teams going forward to move from, you know, just DevOps or just network operations to DevNet Ops or Net DevOps, whatever you want to call it, right? This has been great, Matt. Uh, I look forward for us to, to have this conversation and continue that topic uh, as we, we keep doing these snack minutes. Um, thank you, Snackers, for joining us. And yeah, uh, thank you, Snackers, for joining us. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this yummy snack. Uh, join us next week as we talk about the new uh, release of Yank Suite in episode nine.